Hi everyone, Cody Don here and welcome back to Cody's Lab. Today I have uh, Andy from How to Make Everything and uh, I'm going to help them make some glass. I wanted to get some potassium nitrate but unfortunately my knitter bed is, uh, well it was eaten by the cows. They literally ate it. Turns out uh, chicken poop tastes a lot like corn and cows love to eat it. So today I'm going to be making some nitric acid from the air and I guess I'll react it with some calcium to make calcium nitrate which will work just as well as the high temperature oxidizer to burn out impurities in the glass. So I got a little uh, pH gauge here and a shot glass full of water. Looks like our pH is just about neutral which is excellent because that is pure water. And I'm just going to pour this over here into this glass jar just like that and I'm going to insert these electrodes which are coming off of this high voltage power supply. There you go. It's got a little spark going. So what's going on with the spark is it's producing an environment which is so hot it turns the gases in the air into plasma and when they cool down they reorient themselves and basically it stirs everything up so instead of having N2 and O2 you can wind up with N2O or NO or all sorts of different molecules including ozone. But fortunately for us the ozone will actually go into oxidizing the uh, nitrogen oxides further into the nitrates. And of course it'll, all that will react with the water forming nitric acid. Alright, it's been going for a few minutes. Let's turn this off. Let's see if we can mix the water in with the gas that's in the jar now. See it's got a slight brown tint to it. Okay, let's open this up. Let's pour the water into this little shot glass again. Let's see how the pH is doing. 5.7, if that's just after a couple of minutes worth of the running. So, yeah, to reduce a whole lot of nitric acid, it's going to take a while. But we can do it this way. Alright, so here we are. It's not going, so I don't know exactly how long this thing actually ran for. I think something happened to my power supply. Anyway, let's uh, open this up. Let's see just how much acid we were able to make. Let's turn this pH meter on. Pour this off into the Little flask here. I'm gonna drop some out. So that looks like a pH of 0.8. Memory serves that means it's just over 0.1 molar in concentration, which means we don't got very much nitric acid here. That'll probably make less than a gram worth of potassium nitrate. Well, it's better than nothing. There's Stansbury Island and the Great Salt Lake. And uh, right down here, some calcite crystals. See that? Let's break a couple of these out of there. We can make a lime out of those. So we need some calcium oxide or lime. And uh, one of the best ways to do it is to uh, take some calcite. And uh, I'm just gonna bust this into little pieces and we're gonna roast it using my new furnace here. All right, that's probably plenty. I don't think we're making more than about a pound of glass, so let's get this cooking. Yes, I am using a measuring cup, but I actually bought this one this time. <laughs> it's just a stainless steel crucible, essentially. I'm just gonna set it inside of here, bring it up to about uh, 2,000 degrees for an hour or so. We should have some lime. Alright, so we're up around uh, 2,000 degrees and it's been there for over an hour. Let's open this up and see how it looks. Whew. It's warm in there. Alright, let's pull it out of there. Oh, the oxide's flaking off getting everywhere. 
Let's see if this uh, strong magnet can pull that out of there. Oh yeah, no problem. No problems at all. Now we got ourselves a bunch of burnt lime. Calcium oxide. No, don't stick to that. The cool thing about this is it's now incredibly brittle and easy to break up into a powder. All right, so I've got some of the uh, quick lime that we've made in this jar here. Now, what are we gonna use this for? You know, we're obviously gonna be using it to make glass, but uh, there is a couple of reasons I've made this. Uh, first of all, we're making soda lime glass, and this is the lime in soda lime glass. This is needed to help make the glass so it's not water soluble. But also, the source of uh, soda, the sodium carbonate, comes from a, uh, well, what we're using for this uh, set of videos is uh, coming from a, a lake in Wyoming. It's a natron brine, which is great because it's almost uh, pure sodium carbonate in water, but it does have a contaminant of sodium sulfate, which is a problem, especially for glass making, because the sodium sulfate will break down over time and release gas and make a metallic uh, smelling vapor over time as it evaporates. And it will take a very, very long time to break down the glass and will probably continue making bubbles for basically as long as we could possibly heat it. So I need to find a way to remove the sodium sulfate from the brine. And to do that, I'm gonna be using this lime. So first of all, to uh, test to make sure this chemistry works, I'm gonna make some sodium sulfate. That's why I've got some uh, bicarbonate of soda here. Now this is just a test. This is not what we're gonna be using for this but this is just to make sure that my chemistry works. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of that, like that. I'll stir this in until it dissolves. And that'll give us our uh, sodium uh, carbonate solution and to convert that into a sodium sulfate solution, I'm gonna neutralize the carbonate using some sulfuric acid, concentrated acid that I've got here. And this is uh, forming sodium sulfate and carbon dioxide, which you can see in the bubbles. Alright, so now that this is neutralized, it's time to make the uh, calcium hydroxide. So we'll take our lime, and I've got some water here. So you can see the uh, temperature of the water right there is about uh, 24 degrees Celsius. Let's actually remove that for a minute. And let's uh, dump in small amount of our calcium oxide here. When we roasted the calcium carbonate, CO2 was released, but heat was also absorbed. When we add this to the uh, water, the calcium oxide will react with the water forming calcium hydroxide and will release lots of heat. We, uh, if we focus on the thermometer there, you can see the temperature is now over 40 degrees Celsius. So quite a bit of heat was released when that reacted with the water. In fact, uh, calcium oxide like this or quicklime has been used as a way to heat up uh, you know, self-heating packets. So now that I've uh, got the uh, quicklime reacted with the water, the heat's been released, I am left with some calcium hydroxide mixed with water. Now the calcium hydroxide is poorly soluble, so you can see that most of it is actually kind of settling out here. And uh, that white material that's settling out is called sacked lime, or you know, calcium hydroxide, or essentially what you would buy at the uh, agricultural store to put on your garden. Now, interestingly enough, its solubility can actually be increased by cooling off the solution. So I will do that by adding some ice here. When I'm doing this with the actual natron brine, I don't think I'm gonna worry about the solubility. I'm just gonna add in a extreme excess of the uh, calcium hydroxide. You know, most of it will just settle out of solution and it'll react as needed. You know, as the hydroxide reacts with the sulfate, it'll, you know, more will dissolve in. So, so very little of it will be left in the remaining solution that I don't think I'll have to worry about it. All right, so I've let this settle out a little bit. Let's uh, pull some of this off. Let's add it to our sodium sulfate solution. Let's see if we get any sort of precipitant. I didn't see anything. That's to be expected. Sodium sulfate is actually somewhat soluble. So we're gonna have to just keep adding it until we get a, some amount dropping out. 
Yeah, it's definitely getting cloudier. See the calcium sulfate is beginning to precipitate out of the solution. Also, the amount of calcium hydroxide I've added is actually not that much. You know, because it's not very soluble. I've only got a little tiny bit of hydroxide here. Like I said, when I add this, the solids in, it'll uh, be much more effective. Now some of you that uh, know a bit more chemistry may have seen a bit of a problem with this. You see, uh, calcium carbonate is much less soluble than calcium sulfate. What I'm going to do here is drop all of that out. We're going to convert the uh, sodium sulfate, sodium carbonate solution into sodium hydroxide, which we can then react with the uh, carbon dioxide later to form the uh, sodium carbonate once again. Also, uh, sodium hydroxide is actually it's equivalent to the sodi sodium carbonate. Uh, they both do the same thing in the glass mixture. Uh, one just releases CO2 and the other one releases water as it breaks down. So now you can probably see that the uh, calcium sulfate is indeed settling out. So this is a way to remove it from solution. It won't remove all of it, but it'll remove it down to a point that we can use it. Alright, so I think that's all of the uh, contribution that I'm going to be providing to these videos. Uh, the uh, nitrates that I've produced will be used to help burn out anything that would cause the glass to turn, say, black. I've produced the uh, calcium oxide, which will be used to uh, help the glass be insoluble. And I've purified the soda so that it uh, doesn't continuously form bubbles as we're heating it. I think I will also be helping to uh, purify the sand. But really all I can do without some major chemical processing is uh, you know, maybe a gravity separation to separate out the magnetite and hematite, which uh, the hematite is not magnetic even though it contains just as much iron and will really uh, change the color of the glass. Even still, I think there might be enough iron left over that the glass is going to wind up being a little bit green anyway. But it should wind up with some clear glass. That's, that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, whether or not we're able to actually make anything with the glass is still you know, unknown because it depends on how hot we can get it. If we can't get it hot enough to be able to work with, then we're not going to make anything with the glass. But just in case we aren't able to get the glass hot enough, I will be bringing a second uh, batch of materials uh, to make leaded glass. Leaded glass melts at a lower temperature, so even my little furnace should be able to melt it. I don't really have the right crucible, but I have inadvertently made this type of glass many times uh, just using my little graphite crucible, so I know it will work. So we can try that as a sort of a backup. <laughs> if it does work out, then that's great, because the lead, I already know that I can extract from the ground on my parents' ranch, and oxidizing it is fairly trivial, if not extremely dangerous. Just heat it up and blow pure oxygen over it. See, now we have some lead oxide. If you guys want to see uh, the collecting the ingredients, such as the sand and the natron brine, go over to uh, How to Make Everything's channel. There'll be a video there. And if you want to see the actual glass making, that's going to be over on Grant Thompson's channel. So, uh, links will be in the description. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you then. All right. <laughs> so we're at Grant's backyard now. We're uh, preheating the crucible. We're going to make some glass.